Okay, so another painting video for Solomon Kane by Mythic Games. This time it's Providence. Now I have already started. Um, I just wanted to try out uh, just a colour. Uh, so what I did with this was use Telesar Blue and I thinned it down with contrast medium. Obviously you can't use water with contrast paints. Uh, so to thin them down, you use that contrast medium. And I'm quite pleased with that. So that's what I'm going to do all the virtues with. Uh, really nice. Again, keeping it vibrant, okay? Uh, shadows wise, really simply, I used um, Black Templar and Mangos Purple. And that's all I've done with those. And the nature of the Black Templar means that you get a really nice effect on there and with the bases, okay? So, so kind of like you see the darkness idea and, uh, and the light idea. Okay, so we're going to carry on from here um, with Providence. Uh, so we've got quite a bit of metal work going on as she's got a fair amount of armour and swords, which is going to be using a lead belcher. But all the cloaks and everything, if we have a little look at her player board, it's kind of this turquoise, very pale turquoise. So that's what I'm going to work on. Now the turquoise I've got is it's called a Kellyan green, and it's a kind of turquoise green, effectively. Uh, so if we use our little palette here, and then you'll see now it looks really blue when you get it out okay it looks really blue when you get it out but if you um if you put it on the on the blotting paper here you'll see it is actually more a kind of a greeny blue okay so that should hopefully i'm happy with that i mean it's got enough green in it i might I'm going to try and get a little bit more green. In fact, let's get more green, green in it. Let, let's get that greeny turquoise. So let's go in with some warp lightning green, some really powerful green. A little bit of that as well. And that should really make it more of a... That might be too much. That might be too much. Let's get some more. Okay, let's go back with that Achillean green and try and get some more of that turquoise colour again back into it. So, you know, it's just a matter of playing with it until you're happy with the results. That's better. That's better. So that's that's more of the turquoise green. And, you know, that's what I love about these contrast paints. You can just mix them. Uh, so you don't need every. You don't need to use colours every time. Now we need to make this really quite thin. Um, so I'm, I'm putting in a fair amount of this contrast medium. I say that's about four loaded brushfuls compared to the brushes of, and there's that's the medium I want. Okay. So let's see how this goes on. We want that ethereal turquoise green. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's looking pretty much exactly what I'm hoping for. Uh, try not to get too much pooling because it's, it's trying to look semi -trans well, translucent, really, aren't we? Um, with our virtue. Using my size one. Yeah, uh, watercolour brush here. <laughs> it's just nice for big areas. Don't worry about getting it on the metals as well, because uh, that's going to just go over with lead belcher. The thing we don't want to go over is the blue that we've already done, of course. Uh, this looks like cloak as well. Just go. Just literally plastering this on now. Well, not plastering on, but make sure I get to all the details here. more important to get coverage here uh, than not. Oh, uh, well, that's not got a lot of primer on it, so just use a couple of, not coats, but a couple of uh, runs by. A 
if it hasn't got primer, just run it by a few times and it'll stick. Oh, that's not looking so great, is it? I nearly let that dry. Oh, that's not good. See, that's not good painting because you can already see that it's started to dry. You've got to be relatively quick. Not happy about that. Hopefully it's wet enough to... Hmm, that might be a bit of a disaster. Hopefully I've just about got that in time. Gotta be careful, uh, cause especially with big miniatures, and especially if you water them down a bit, they will dry quick, um, which can be a disaster if you're going over, especially with these thin down coats. If you're doing a thicker coat, it's not gonna matter as much. But with these thin down coats, it's really important to go as, kind of as fast as possible, really, which uh, sounds a bit counterintuitive to how you would want to take your time um, but not with these I think I'm happy enough with that ah! whoops so I'm just trying to get this one hair wise I think I've hmm that's a point what am I going to do the hair as Hmm, don't know. Um, I think I might do brown belts as well, maybe. Just do everything slightly pastel in tone. Undecided yet. I'm obviously going over all that, so I think we'll um we'll just do the metal, I think. Again, just getting in the nooks and crannies. decent amount of paint in there where the uh, con contrast where the um, primer didn't really get make sure that this bit is not get drying before I uh, finish it off yeah I'm not sure about the hair really not sure about the hair what to uh, paint that as Obviously, with the contrast medium, the paint will, of course, flow more. Uh, so you're going to get the pooling effect a little bit more than you would if you weren't using the contrast medium. But ultimately, the important thing was to get that the right colour. Try and get the paint stick on these bits that obviously get got no primer at all. A 
And to be honest, the way around that, of course, is uh, if you use the base, which I could have done, to be fair, if you use the, uh, the base, Wraithbone base paint uh, to make sure that you've covered all of those areas. But yeah, I think that's pretty much pretty good. Just gonna get right up in there a little bit. And I think I th I'm not I'm not loving it right now, but I think it'll look fine once we get the um once we get the metal work done. Now again, how we do the metal work, we'll have to have a little think. We're gonna go over it with some sort of um contrast medium. That uh, contrast medium, contrast paint. Or we're gonna just do it with lead belcher and basilicon and grey as a normal. Uh, right, these are not. Hmm. Do or are no? Yeah, they're not. Um, that's not armor. And again, not worrying about the metal work. It's the metal, when we do the metal work, that's when we'll have to be super careful. Okay. So there's the green, the kind of turquoise green, trying to match this color really as best as we could. I think it's pretty close to uh, where I want it to be. And you can really see the difference between them then as well. I think we'll go with the same with these as well. Number one, we've got the paint anyway. And I'll literally go all over these with this color. Now, obviously this might be a bit too bright and, and um, I was gonna say cheery, a bright and, um, and too pastel, I suppose, uh, for your liking. Um, but that's not the nature of what I wanted the game to look like, to be honest. I, I kind of want it to be a little bit vibrant in color. So hopefully this will give the effect, effect I'm after. The truth will be in the final product. Remember, just like a normal painting uh, that you would do, don't judge it until you've completed it. If you start second guessing yourself of what your plan was and um, partway through the painting, you're never gonna finish it. And it's, it's never gonna be to your satisfaction until you've finished it. So you, you, wanna, so you wanna just crack on, keep going, trust it, it's gonna work out. And just go with your first instincts. And then if, it, if it's an absolute disaster and you hate it, you can always reprime. You can always strip it and reprime and then go again. You won't, to be honest, you won't lose much detail if you prime, spray crayon prime, and then contrast paint over it. it we're talking about such thin paint. I've run out of paint now, haven't I? Great. Talking about such thin paint that you know it's not gonna, it's not you're not gonna lose the detail, which you can do if you use the normal paints, of course. If you go on too thick, uh, the problem is when you get to the end. Be a bit thick. We can always put a bit of contrast medium to uh, thin that down, to be honest. Don't think we'll need to, I think we'll be all right.
Awesome. Oh, nearly missed out a whole arm there. Just in there as well. Okay, she's looking pretty bright, which is cool. I love that. I think I think she wants to look bright, right? And also, I don't particularly want to have to. Uh, if we look, just look at look at her aura. Okay, we're looking at a bright colour, but I just want it to be, rather than all be the same, I wanted to have some slight variance in them in, in the colours. Okay, so she's now drying. Uh, so, basically, uh, apart from the hair, I really don't know what to do with the hair. You know what, I think, I think I'll go in with the blue again. The face and the hair, I think, will go blue because that's not part of her clothing. So, tell us our blue. Make sure you clean your brush before you put it in the uh, contrast medium. And then contrast medium. Probably a little bit more than that, actually. Perfect. Smaller brush, a size zero, zero will do. Let's do that. Again, I, this is all going to be metal, so that's why I'm not, I'm not being too careful about the. Um, where this paint goes. I don't really want it to go over the uh, the green, of course, that I've just done. So I'm just being a little bit careful about that. If I can get down the side of there, you see. Go over the face. I didn't know. Yeah, just be a little bit careful. I don't want to go over the uh, the facial details that I've done already. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. Cool. Don't want to really black in there. That wouldn't that wouldn't work. Okay, so lead belt is going to be next. So we're using our base lead belcher. Any silver will do. I think I'm gonna go back to my bigger brush. Uh, why not? We've got a lot of area to cover. I can always go to the smaller brush to uh, do the bits that, the edges as it were. Uh, get a bit of water onto those. Okie dokie. So I think we're gonna start with the shield. Look at the beautiful detail. <laughs> I can't believe the detail on this shield. It's, it's so nice. There's a little bit more water on there. Thin it down a bit more. Let it flow through and get into the gaps. Take away the excess there. Perfect. I've just gone over there, don't I?
Let's get like a covering on the swords. I think we need to go to a small little brush in a minute. Let's just do the kind of horns, <laughs> I suppose. The, the helmet. Okay, let's go to this small brush. Get a bit more control. There's a lot of miniature to paint here as well, so I think that's why it's Gonna take a little bit longer to get all the miniature painted, of course. My holder doesn't unfortunately stretch this much, so like Super Fancy Brawl, I'm having to hold the miniature itself. If you've got a holder that extends past that, that that will really make your life easier. Holders so much better for uh, painting with and holding miniatures while you. Uh, while you manipulate them and paint them at different angles. I'm just getting all of the lead belcher on here. So the sword's done. Let's complete that shield next. Obviously some bits are more fiddly than others. Uh, wish I had a holder, I really do. Um, that 
that shield's so cool. Not easy, especially when the primer hasn't uh, taken to this part. <laughs> it's just really not sticking with that. That's fine. Right, helmet next. I need some more paint. Make sure you regularly take the paint off your brush. Don't allow it to dry. Just doing the detail work here, so that's why I'm a bit more quiet. <laughs> and there's a lot of miniature to, to cover here in terms of the metal as well, so. Looks good. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, let's go straight to the. I've le ah, you see, I've left a big splodge white there. Not great, really not great. Uh, that's why you know you need to just make sure you cover everything. So that was a mistake by me. I'm going to try and get, I've got to get that color back again as well, which was a mix of three paints. So this is, that's the issue with uh, <laughs> with not using a one color paint. Uh, it takes a long, a lot of effort to try and get the same color. It's not like you can use a kind of wet palette for contrast paints to keep those colors that you've mixed, unfortunately. So that's not ideal. So not ideal. I think we'll just go in here with all metal. Uh, so awkward to hold. So sorry if that's coming up off the screen there. As I try to. Um, whoop. Oops, no, that's okay. Now, 
it's not as fun as the um and Solomon Kane was a lot of people have mentioned about is a lot of uh, browns and blacks. The boy was actually m the most fun miniature to paint so far. It was really quick and easy um, to, to paint him. But um, yeah, this this is a lot of metal and uh, it's going to happen for all of the virtue. Well, I don't suppose they've got all loads of metal actually. That's not true. Um, it's only justice, not justice, uh, courage, which has even more metal than Providence. So actually, I don't think the others will be as bad. Sorry if my hair's getting in the way there. I'm just trying to look into the detail. Okay, uh, that looks like the, the metal work for her. So let's go to the shields now here. Once I've got Providence painted, we can start working on... Ah, uh, yeah. I want to start working on Schools of the Stars. Now, the thing will be, in the UK here, we're not able to um, get to shops. <laughs> I'm thinking Warhammer, most of all. Uh, to Until mid-April. So it's going to be a fair amount of time away without... Um, getting the Wraith Bone Spray, the all-important Wraith Bone Spray, and it's just ludicrous money on the internet to try and get it in the UK. Uh, it's, it's sold out everywhere, as, as all Citadel sprays have, to be completely honest. Now, I do have, and I could use, and I might well do, I've got a grey and a white primer, just standard primer. Now, they're not this this um this uh wraith bone spray is by far the best uh for for the paints however it will go on this this normal i've used it before it will go on this normal primer and i can do a xenophil highlight just to help the contrast work and we can do like the villagers and some of the some of the uh the guards and things like that things that you know aren't the prominent characters of the game uh so I th that's i think it's going to be the next stage but to get the uh i mean i've got all of the virtues primed um and then one more shadow so that's all i've got managed to get primed with what i had left of my spray can so unfortunately it's not enough to do schools and the stars especially Gideon's ghost that's my that's the biggest one that I, I haven't managed to do and I would have liked to do so maybe I do I start skulls and the star playthrough um, before I've painted the miniatures cool Okay, so there is the metalwork. Look at that shield. And now she's got paint all over her. She's, I'm quite liking that. Now the greens, that knee, that's a big, big problem. Hmm. So what I would suggest to do here, what you normally do is you have to just base the the whole area. Yeah, let's do that. Or else it's just not, it's going to look rubbish. So we're going with the wraith bone base. And this is what you can do if you make a mistake like I've done. And then you just effectively paint over the area. Unfortunately, it's, it's also where the metal's gone. So I'm going to have to probably redo that bit as well. There we 
There we go. So you see, I've, it's, it's almost like a panel, <laughs> painted a panel of her leg where the crease comes to, because the crease will give a natural border anyway, so that should be fine. I've also noticed I need some blue in right in that corner there as well. So I've still got a little bit of that blue left. So let's do that now. Oops, come on. So we're just gonna go into that. Come on, paint, take it, take it. Okay, that's a bit better. Yeah, that's better. Okay, necklace, what are we gonna do that necklace with? I think we'll carry on with the blue, actually. It makes sense to uh, just keep going with the blue. Okay, so that green needs all mixing up again. Oh, what a bit of a disaster that was. Right, so. A tiny, a tiny bit of the green. We're talking about minuscule amounts of things now because we, <laughs> we don't need much at all. Is that enough green? No. It's not green enough. Just the smallest amount can make it so different. See, that's gone too far the other way. <laughs> um. Something I said, you won't need much paint at all to uh, get this color. I might need a bit. That's better. That's it. That's the color. Now we've got to get thin it down again. Uh, that should be dry by now. not quite as green is it that's the problem but i think when it dries it'll be pretty close so that's a fix up of what we had to do for that leg and that, honestly that'll look far better than if you try and go over just that white bit with the contrast paint so i know it's a bit of a bind that's ideally not what you want to do um, but it's honestly the best way forward right okay you'll leave that to dry a little bit more What's that? That's a spill. Okay, I saw that. So somehow I just spilled some of it onto the onto the cloud coming up. Okay. So silicone grey. No, I've got an idea. I'm gonna go in with Griff Charger Grey instead of Basilicon Grey. Basilicon Grey will give a very dark metal look. Whereas, now I could go over this with like a very thin down version of the blue, um, but I think it'll be better with this. Now, do we do a thin down version of this gray? Now, what better place to try it on than that shield? Now, I think it will be light enough to give a kind of slight blue tinge is what we want, but keep the metal look. I hope. I guess we'll soon find out. But I think this is going to be better all round.
Hmm, am I happy with that? Am I happy with that? Or do we go... Do we go with a... We're gonna make a decision quick. <laughs> Obviously. Um... Um, let me think, let me think very quickly. I do quite like that. Would we go really thin down blue? Uh, no, I, I like that. I like that. It's kind of like a very, it's, it's keeping the good shine. Yeah, no, I am. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. The only thing I might suggest is just a bit more paint used, perhaps. God, I haven't done very well there, have I? Maybe a little bit more paint used to give it more of a blue tone. I don't, but ultimately, I don't want pooling. Yeah, that's good. No, that's good. Yeah, happy with that. I was contemplating whether to use just Griff Charger Grey on all the virtues, <laughs> possibly as a, and that could work as, if you want a quick, uh, a quick idea, Griff Charger Grey may well work as literally just on the, all the virtues. Now the great thing about using this Grave Charger Grey is it doesn't really matter if you get over parts of the hand and stuff <laughs> because it's so close to that colour. It will kind of complement it rather than go really against it. Of course I got silver all over the hand. Of course I did. Uh, so I'm sure you can be a lot better compared to me at um, taking your time a bit more than me, perhaps, as you go through this. God, this is just hard to hold. Yeah, it's giving it a contrast, so it's not like a plasticky silver, but keeping keeping the brightness still, which was kind of key. Now, of course, of course, there are better ways to do the metal of this. You could non-metallic metals, uh, NMMs, are there's some fantastic tutorials on YouTube. It just it all takes time. <laughs> So it depends if you've got time to do stuff like that, of course, that you can make an amazing paint job. But if you want to, again, as with all of my videos, if you want a relatively quick result that has, I mean, this is very unique to what I envisaged. It may not be your cup of tea, so you may, may want to skip my virtues paintings if that's not the, or just if you get some ideas from them again. Great, that's, um, that's exactly what these uh, videos are for. So we go in there. Awesome. Let's do this side and that. And then get in there. Give it another coating just to help finish off. Right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Now we do. Oh, um, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. 
I don't again I don't think it matters if some some of the silver is masked by the the greens and the blues because I think that helps to kind of blend it all together. Remember doing all the metal work here. That's really coming along now. So I want to do those shields. Let's get some more paint in in the lid. Hold it like this and go over these. So awkward to hold. Yeah, if you've got a holder, a holder that expands, then your quid's in there. That's uh, this really going to help you with this. <laughs> keep dropping this left, right, and centre. And the other shield. pooling and using it on the rest of the shield and that's those done right awesome so she's pretty much done um i think in terms of where i want to be with the virtue So here she is. I just think it's going to give her the blue. I love the blue. <laughs> the blue is perfect. And I like the green. I do like the green. The green's, um, it's pastel looking. It, it looks kind of, gives the, that that illusion of semi, semi transparency, a translucent look. And the metal, once it's dried, will, yeah, I'm pleased with that. It'll look good. Look like it's got contrast, it'll look a bit more like metal, and it's going to pop on the board, which is exactly the whole point of what I was trying to aim for. So, if, if I bring out a board, so say you've got uh, say you've got your board, hopefully, there's no paint on there. I mean, that's going to pop, right? You've got your Solomon cane, and then you've got your shadows looming as well. So I want the virtues to pop on the board. Um, I want them to, to have that contrast between the real world with, uh, I haven't got any of the other painted, my, uh, I haven't got my boy 
<laughs> he's in, he's backed away at the moment. Uh, so you'll you'll notice the difference between these ones and these kind of like wispy, uh, non-mortal uh, beings. These ethereal beings. So that oh, I'm loving that. That looks. That, I'm really pleased with that. Again, I wasn't sure about that at all until I got the metal on. It's only when I got the metal on and uh, got that painted up that I went, actually, yeah, the greens and the blues are kind of working together. Um, give it a good black base, I think. Yeah, black base with everything. And then we are good. Okay. Awesome. So for the black base, uh, just normal black paint. I just want to make sure we've got dried paint first of all before I start holding. No, we haven't. Um, I kind of want to show you the the plan, but I've got no way of holding this virtue without it being a disaster. Um, so I'm going to have to leave painting just the black base until um, until after it's dried. So I won't do that on this video. So just to show you again the virtue. Providence, painted with contrast paints and lead belcher for the metal. Ready to help out Solomon Kane on his journeys. So yeah, we'll keep going with this. Um, again, Providence is going to be used for the solo playthrough, my first solo playthrough, Rattle of Bones. Not Rattle of Bones. My first solo playthrough of Skulls and the Stars, that's the one. Um, so that's going to be awesome to do. I just need to paint up as much as I can. Actually, I just need to do another shadow, which will be really quick. And then um, and then we can get started, actually, uh, because I, I haven't got anything else to paint. I've got nothing else primed. So it's going to be um, Providence, Sodom and Cain, Shadows and the Boy um, until I get the next Wraith Blown Spray, um, whenever that will be. Uh, so that's what it's going to be. So I hope you, I uh, hope this gave you some ideas and you enjoyed it. That was 53 minutes of video. I think I finished at 50 or 45 minutes. Um, it's just having a little play since then. Quite simple to do. Uh, it didn't take too long, but I will be doing the other virtues. So I've got the other virtues to paint. They have been primed. So, you know, in terms of painting, they're certainly going to be on the, the, the board. I still have my kingpin to paint as well. So plenty to paint. Um, until April, I think, and one shadow, as I say. But the shadows literally take minutes. It's uh, the Magos purple, and then just on with the black, and that's it. Cool. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, keep painting.